All right, now the thing that we want to be able to analyze is what happens when we have multiple regions. So I'm going to start with three regions. That's about what we'll be doing throughout most of the class. But please realize that you can change all of these into multiple regions if you need to. Here is region number one, here is region number two, and here is region number three. We have an incident plane wave that's propagating normally incident to these three regions. The polarization is analyzed exactly the same way it was before. But what we're interested in is the reflection coefficient. The reflection coefficient that matters to us in region one is right here. That's right where we calculated it before, but this time we have multiple boundaries. You can see we can't use the simple equation that we had before because we're going to have a reflection here, we're going to have another reflection that occurs here, and multiple reflections occurring back and forth in, in this region. So this reflection coefficient has to be a function of region number one, region number two, and region number three. So I'm going to show you how to analyze that using the Smith chart. Since we want this reflection coefficient, we have to analyze the entire system together. So we're actually going to start over with region number three. We're going to start with a load. The origin, we're going to first place an origin. We're going to call it origin three, right here on the left-hand side of this load. Then we're going to put all of the other origins on the right-hand side of the region. So this is origin number two, and this is origin number one. Those just give us some reference points. The positive z direction, is in this direction just like it was before. And if this region is a thickness D2 thick, and perhaps we're interested in other things that happen out of here at D1, then this point right here is minus D2. Anything out here would be minus D1. Now, as I said, we're going to start with this region. And the first thing that we start with is impedance. We're interested in the impedance of Z3 at O3. Impedance has a very similar relationship to what we saw in transmission lines. Z, the impedance, is equal to the ratio of the total electric field in the Z direction divided by the total magnetic field in the Z direction. In this case, this would be the Z at O3. If we were interested in just eta, this is going to be eta 3 at O3, this is the positive going electric field divided by the positive going magnetic field. But look at region number three. There's no reflection here at all. So region number three, the ratio of the positive going electric and magnetic field, which is A to three, it's like Z naught, is equal to the ratio of the total fields because there are no reflected fields. So the first thing that we do is we set Z3 at O3 equal to A to three. Remember, this is in ohms. Now here's a trick. If we have the ratio of electric and magnetic fields here, which we do, the ratio of the fields has to be exactly the same thing here because if it wasn't, then there would be sparks and flame. So we can say that the ratio or the ohms cross this boundary. So Z2 at O2 is equal to Z3 at O3. The ohms cross the boundary. But we'd like to get over here now to minus D2. So we're going to do that using a Smith chart. Well, if we want to use a Smith chart, that means we have to normalize Z2 at O2 in order to put it on the Smith chart. So Z2 at O2, which is Z3 at O3, if I want to normalize it, I'm going to divide it by eta 2. Eta 2 is like Z0 for region number 2. This gives me a normalized value that I can plot on the Smith chart. Here's a Smith chart. We need to plot the normalized value for O2. We're going to read the real part and the imaginary part and plot a value right here. Let's suppose these are our numbers for Z2 normalized at O2. If we wanted the reflection coefficient right here at O2, which we don't need yet, we can simply read from the center of the Smith chart, draw a straight line out here, read this magnitude, down on the reflection coefficient axis. We could read this magnitude. And then out here on the angle of reflection coefficient line, we could re read the angle of the reflection coefficient. So if we wanted the reflection coefficient at O2, this is how we would find it. But that's not what we want. 
We want the reflection coefficient at O1, so we better move to the left. Moving to the left is towards the generator. That's this direction on the Smith chart. So we're going to start at O2, we're going to go to D2. So let's suppose that this is about a quarter of a wavelength. That means that I'm going to rotate towards the generator over here to Z2 normalized at minus D2. Notice that this is towards the generator, a distance of D2. Plot this value right here. This magnitude is equal to this magnitude. It's like using a protractor to go around in the circle. So now we're at minus D2. We have a normalized value, so let's read Z2 normalized at minus D2. Now we want to be able to cross the boundary, so just like right here, the ratio of the electric and magnetic field must be the same across the boundaries. That means that ohms can cross the boundary. So Z2n is not in ohms. We need to get it into ohms. So we're going to multiply it by eta2 in order to denormalize it. This gives us a value here. This is Z2, not normalized, at minus D2, and that's in ohms. Now since ohms cross the boundary, we can see that that is equal to Z1 at O1. Now if we want the, ref we've got the ratio here, the ratio of the electric and magnetic field, if we would like to be able to find the reflection coefficient, we could plot this on the Smith chart. So let's take Z1 at O1 and normalize it. This time we're dividing by eta1, and let's plot that on the Smith chart. Let's suppose that it comes up with a real and imaginary part right here. So this would be Z1 normalized at O1. Now, what we wanted was the reflection coefficient in region 1 at O1. That's the reflection coefficient that showed up in our electric and magnetic reflected fields in the previous slide. So if we want this, we simply read it off this chart. Draw a line from the center through my point, read this magnitude down here, and read the angle of the reflection coefficient out here on the Smith chart. So this has a magnitude and a phase of the reflection coefficient. And we simply read that off the Smith chart in the O1 point, plug that back into our equations, and we have the electric and magnetic fields in region number one. The next thing I'd like to show you what, how to handle is when region number two, or perhaps region number one, are lossy. So let's look at that one next.